Hello and welcome to Castable. This is the podcast which brings on brilliant guests to pitch their dream music festival. My name is Matt Hoss and I'm the host and I'm here to guide you around their festival. Today's guest is actor, presenter and award-winning stand-up comedian who's appeared on Mock the Week and Comedy Central and so much more. It's Tanya Moore. Hello. Hi. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure. And how are you doing today? I'm doing all right, actually. Thank you, considering where we are. <laughs> You know, I always ask that question is because it's a nice warm introduction, but then I'm just like, oh yeah, it's quite a uh, the uh... the worldwide pandemic happening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for coming on to the podcast. It's an absolute joy to have you. And we often start with this question, which is, if someone were to ask you what kind of music are you into, how do you typically respond? 90s R&B. <laughs> that's it. Straight the, away. The... Yeah, that's it. That's where I live. You've got a decade. You've got a genre. Yep, I live there. I don't know what happens today because that's all I listen to. If you go on my Spotify, that's all that's there. It's 90s <laughs> R&B. I listen to it when I'm happy, when I'm sad. When I'm angry, when I'm getting ready to go out, when I'm getting ready to go to bed, it's 90s R&B all day. Oh my God. Non-stop 90s R&B. That sounds, uh, that sounds like an absolute tree. And I guess you kind of got into it in the 90s as well. And uh, that's it. You kind of I mean, grown up yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it'd be yeah. kind of weird if you'd grown I, mean, I, up a bit I was in the 80s. born in 1982, so I really know 90s music. I was old <laughs> enough to remember the words. <laughs> oh, wow. And do you feel modern music misses um, 90s R&B? Do you reckon, uh, do you reckon there's space for more 90s R&B, like in the modern uh, realm of music? We definitely need more 90s R&B because the 90s R&B, the music back then, mm-hmm. there was a story. We knew if you were in love, who with, how much you loved them, what you wanted to do, how you felt. Nowadays, it's just, I need my money and I want to have sex. And it's like, babes, (laughs) where's the art? (laughs) Like, I don't mind that you need the money and you want to have sex, but you got to sing it in a 90s way. You can't just be like, give me the money and the dick. No, babes, you got to caress the money and the dick. (laughs) Caress the money and caress the dick. Yeah, Yeah, because in the 90s, they'll be like, baby... I've never loved nobody like you. And then now they're like, give me the money, give me the dick. And it's like, no, babe, you've got to at least tell the money you've never loved the money like any other money. Like, give me something a little bit more. <laughs> That's so poetic uh, for, for, <laughs> for the realm we're talking about. Yeah, it's... Uh, I, yeah, I just... exactly. Do, do you think that's kind of a, a modernization thing? Because you know, we, we kind of, this is a quite a heavy point to have early on, but like, you know, we're kind of surrounded by phones and we kind of love things instantly. Do you think that's a, that's a, a sign of the times being kind of like, we want, we want dick and money right now, rather than, oh, let's just ease into it. Definitely. I mean, when I was growing up, it was very Marvin Gaye. What's mm-hmm. going on? My, Michael Jackson, let's heal the world. Now my niece is telling me about Cardi B and Cardi B ain't healing nothing. <laughs> But her bloody bank account. Yeah. She's not trying to save anyone's world but Cardi's world. So Absolutely. It's very different. Obviously, her song is in very uh, 90s R&B. It's uh, uh, Wet Ass Bank Account Balance. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, they... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, when I was growing up, we had salt and pepper and the... You know, the, 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 the worst thing you could have said was push it. <laughs> Very different to wet ass bank yeah. account. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <I'm... laughs> um, I love salt and pepper as well. Like, uh, I uh, think, think they're awesome. And I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to have a, a good time at your festival. And I feel like with 90s R&B, there's very little room for getting wrong. And I assume that's what your festival is going to be around as well. But like, it's uh, I feel that anyone can have a nice time there. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's a, like, it's Definitely. not, there's no cl- closed borders with it. But a little bit more about you. Did you ever want to be a musician in your life? Do you, do you play any instruments? Um, no, I used to play the triangle and the recorder. That's, that's <laughs> classic. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the classic triangle and recorder. And all you can do in the recorder is Mary Had a Little Lamb because, or Bar Bar Black Sheep because mm-hmm. you don't move your fingers very much. <laughs> But I'm, I used to be a dancer. I'm more of a dancer. So oh, that's really? my connection to music. And my dad's hobby is to DJ. So in wow. our house, there was a lot of music growing up all the time. I've danced all the time. And that's how I like music. So some people like music because they like an artist or the name of the song. I like music because I prefer music I can dance to. 
Okay, yeah. And so that's my connection to music, yeah. When there's music where it doesn't really have as much of a beat, do you feel like you kind of instantly like, nope, not this track, thank you very much? Definitely. I'm like, well, what's the point of this then? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Radiohead, come yeah. on, get, get, get a bit of a groove on. You know, like, talk about how much you want dick and money. It's something. Give me a deep bass line every four counts. What's yeah. wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i think um did you ever in terms of dancing did you ever do any of that like uh music festivals or, like in terms of on stage stuff did a lot of on stage stuff a lot of shows mm -hmm. went to the u.s we were the first uk group to win the world hip-hop champions in 2005 wow. that's amazing so we did that that was fun i did a couple of music videos i did 21 seconds so solid that was fun mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you know that was very poignant and yeah, I've had a, I've had a really nice dance career, really. But uh, it was always a second love, third, mm -hmm. fourth love. My main love is acting, but yeah. dancing and music is definitely following close second, third. I tell you what, like I find it so interesting as like um because obviously we're both comedians, but like uh, but we we also do tons of other stuff as well. Like our whole lives, like yeah, I do this, I'll, I'll do a bit of everything. You know what I mean? Like we have to learn so mm -hmm. many skills. I think. For those of us that have been in it since childhood, that was always ever going to only be the answer, right? Because I feel like if you've been a creative from childhood, you've probably tried all the different avenues to see which one best suits you, oh, the one yeah. you like the most. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel that the reason I do this podcast, Tanya, is that I, uh, I really wanted to be a rock star and that's not a possibility <laughs> anymore. So this is the closest I can get. <laughs> I can talk about being a rock star. If you can't be a comedian, teach comedy. <laughs> I totally get it. That's my next gig, going to teach comedy. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, have you been to many music festivals in your life? I've only been to two festivals. Ooh. Um, only because I'm not really somebody who likes to be out around the green like that because I have hay fever. Oh, and really? And I'm always... Yeah. By the end of the day, I'm so sensitive of it. My face is swollen. My eyes are swollen. I've rubbed everything. I can barely see. I can barely breathe. <laughs> and so anything where I'm around too much nature for too long, I'm like, probably best not. I, I probably best I don't go, guys. I'm going to ruin everyone's day. <laughs> Absolutely. You don't want to be uh, like sneezing to the carnage of cheese. You know what I mean? Like, you're, you're, no, you're... exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't Sorry, want I... us to have to leave during the middle of the headliner because yeah. I'm dying. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I've got a bit of a melt and build up. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, uh, very rock and roll. Yeah, it's like, sorry to interrupt your festival, but my throat's closing up. So. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what was the two festivals you went to then? I went to Latitude nice. Festival. Yeah. And I went to a festival, I forgot the name of it. It was very small one. I think it was like a WeWorks mm -hmm. corporate festival where they have for their staff they put on for the weekend that I was performing at. But we were allowed to stay for two days. So I took advantage of the two days and I stayed. And it was a lot of fun. And did you do any camping there? No, because <laughs> I'm not weird. <laughs> <laughs> you know what like the with this podcast it really does separate the uh, the wheat from the chaff the campers from the non-campers because the campers <laughs> yeah, are like yeah, yeah i love it you have to do it and then there's people like no no i'll be i'll be at the uh, um hilton i'll see you later <laughs> yeah i'm gonna i mean i'm gonna have a shower and i'll come right back <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah um but yeah well i think it's time to head over to the admin side of your festival so let's go and set up camp Hello and welcome to Season 3 of Castable. Great to have you back. If you like what we do, please give us a 5 star rating on Apple Podcasts and write us a little kind review. Also, why don't you share our podcast? Tell a friend about it. Word of mouth really helps spread the world, so please help us do that. Why don't you tweet at us at Castable Podcast and drop me a follow at Matt House Comedy. Why don't you watch me on Twitch at Matt House Comedy? If you like sci fi books, why don't you buy my book called Purify from www.matthousecomedy.com? Enjoy the rest of the episode. Cheers. Needing away a late last night, and I've got no place to go. I took a wrong turn, and now I'm here. I'm pissed in fear. Needing away a late last night, and I've got no place to go. I took a wrong turn and now I'm here, I'm pissing So I'm very much looking forward to hearing more about your festival, but what is the name of your festival, Tanya? 
It's called Let's Go Back. Let's Go Back. Absolutely. I like the Let's that. Let's Go Back Festival. And because do, so... what it is, as soon as you come to our festival, mm-hmm. you are, I'm going to, it's, gonna, it's not even a festival, it's an experience. And you are going to experience all of the 90s from 1990 <laughs> to 1999, right before we had the panic of the millennium. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember that? And we all thought like everyone's going to come out of prison and yeah. everything's going to reset to zero. We yeah. really thought that the world was going to end. But yeah, that's that's the experience. This festival's strictly Y2K anti. You know, you, you're just you're against the bug whatsoever. You're against all modern technology. You're just the purely nineties yep. things. Yeah, I like that. In my festival, we're still writing shit down in pen and paper, <laughs> babes. Yeah, there's no iPads to take your and no no touching of the of the credit card. If you don't remember your your pin, you're not making a transaction you better go to the cash point it's very old school here very old school <laughs> i i kind of like it because like if this this experience takes off in like 100 200 years time you'll it'll be kind of like an arm like an updated amish version you know what i mean like uh, it, it, doing yeah. everything in the 90s <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean like you've got baggy yeah. trousers on wow what is this you know yeah what I mean? there's going to be people oh, i'm going to have milkmen driving around with milk carts but instead of having milk in the bottles it'll just be alcohol we can sell yeah. and that's that's going to be very <laughs> that's actually a really good idea i like that i want to have yeah. like, an alcoholic milkman <laughs> that'd be good yeah and it's going to have lots of things like bouncy castles and candy floss machines and ice cream vans and just all things that say 90s. And everyone's got to wear dungarees and Doc Martens and do you know what I mean? Like just proper 90s vibe. And if someone turns up wearing something distinctly 80s or very 2000, um, would, you, would they be kicked out of the festival? They won't be allowed in to even be kicked out. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Very yeah. strict security. Even my security will have dungarees. Everyone's. Had dungarees. I don't. I don't think I could fear security wearing dungarees. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> but, yeah, that's true. I might give them dungarees and a puffer jacket. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. and it has to be naff naff because you know naff naff were a thing of the nineties. <laughs> So do you do you think that life was better in the nineties? Definitely, I definitely agree. Yeah, I think we were definitely very more community, and there was a lot more of you know that saying it takes a village. There was still lots of villages. I think right now mm-hmm. we're very singular. People mm-hmm. don't talk to their neighbours. They don't really. Do you know what I mean? We're not the, we're not as community as we used to be. Mm-hmm. So I I I miss those days, and I wish we could go back to those days. Definitely. Yeah, I I one thousand percent agree. And um, there's um, Johan Hari writes in his book. Um, uh, it's called Lost Connections, and uh, uh, basically it's a book about um, kind of like how as a society we're more depressed and, and anxious because of uh, for many reasons. But one of the reasons is lack of community and lack of connection with other people. And I I uh, I think yeah. uh, you're right. And especially in the current climate, I think it's very uh, a lot of people are isolated, and it's uh, important to have that human connection. And uh, I I like how your festival stands up for that, and it's about connecting with each other which is important mm. yeah i want to go back to the days where you go to the fridge you've got no milk all right i'm going to go next door of a cup and get some from Teresa. i like that energy <laughs> without Teresa telling everyone on twitter i remember yeah. those days you could do whatever you want without the fear of being cancelled <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair i thought you were gonna say i just wanted to get some milk out of the fridge and i get the milk man he's just sold me some kalua and it's really ridiculous <laughs> i got a bottle of wine from him that's <laughs> brilliant yeah <laughs> so whereabouts geographically would you like a festival to take place now i was thinking i've got two locations mm-hmm. it's either going to be south london because mm-hmm. That's where I'm born and raised. And when I say 90s and community, that's instantly the area that I'm thinking of. So we've got the massive Brockwell Park in Camberwell, which is a great location for people to get to because you can get to Elephant and Castle quite easily and then just walk down the road. Mm -hmm. Lots of bus connections, all kinds of stuff. So it'll be great there. Somewhere like Birmingham, which is in the middle. So somebody who wanted to come from, I don't know, Scotland, it's not so much of a journey for them to get to. It's still in the middle for everybody a little bit. Absolutely. So, yeah, those are the two locations, just depending on who's coming. <laughs> yeah. Well, I like that. I like that. And uh, you could even do like a thing like they do at Leeds or Reading or like uh, at the V festivals where like there's two different locations, like sister locations for it as well. Yes. Like, 
It, it could work. Um, exactly. To keep it to the 90s theme, and uh, depending how strict you really want to be with the 90s theme, uh, would you, do you have to travel through 90s means? So, like, you have to get into, like, a 90s car, like, uh, which was made in the 90s, and no, no earlier car, no Teslas whatsoever. <laughs> no, no, no. I think, because then that's, that's put in too much on the person... <laughs> before they even arrive at the festival. I think I want to keep it. As soon as you get to these doors, everything that stands right now in your life is no more. As soon as you walk through those gates, you are immersed into the 90s. Whoever you were in the 90s, you can be that person again. So I'm going to have pods. So like, if you, if you think you enjoyed 94 the most, then we're going to go to 94 pods and it will be all 94 type music, mm-hmm. right? And if you want to go to like 96, you'll go to 96 pod and it'll be all 96 type music. And there'll be DJs catering to music of that year for each pod. That sounds amazing. Right? We'll we'll definitely dig into that idea a lot more in the next section for sure. Because I I think that that's going to be intrinsic to the music as well. Yes. But the idea is there's different sections for different years. Yes. That's brilliant. I really like that. But without revealing the lineup, how much do you think we're going to charge per ticket? I would say between 60 to 110. And 110 means that you can do VIP and get to meet the lineup as well. That's really good. That's that's like a 90s value as well, I would say. Right? Yeah. I think so. I think I'm great at this. I don't know how much money I'm going to make, but I think I'm great <laughs> at it. <laughs> well, very rarely do people make money on this. So it's a, in fact, yeah. I would say they're, they're, they're kind of, uh, because of the dream aspect of it, they, they're losing a lot yeah. of money. <laughs> well, I think it's time to head over to uh, the main area of your festival and see what awesome lineup you have. Yes. Festival, if you can hear me, I want you to sing along. Go for it. One more time. So to begin, I've got a very soft, so I'm going to start with Tevin Campbell because Ooh, Tevin wow. Campbell has some greats like Can We Talk. Mm-hmm. That's a great Tevin Campbell song. It's a nice, it's a kind of like, you know, when you go to a comedy night and you've got the music that plays you in and kind of sets mm-hmm. you up for what's about to happen. That's kind of what I'm going to go for. Can We Talk, I'm Ready kind of soft slow rpm but still with enough bounce for you to get your head going so it's not like calm down music it's just kind of like oh i can have a conversation to this Mm -hmm. absolutely and it's it's just there yeah kind of like uh, i i I love it uh, as you say it like comedy clubs where like it's just like it's enough the music is really important to kind of suck you in because you have anything that's too harsh or too abstract it's yes. kind of it, it's off it um off puts the music in the night but what you're doing yeah. for your whole festival is putting on the right kind of introductory warm embracing music which is really really important yes. as well yes also i kind of forgot to ask but at the top of your festival uh, how long is your festival gonna last three days brilliant so you Fr- come friday morning mm-hmm. some people if they're gonna if they're gonna camp they can come from thursday night but it all kicks off friday morning and ends sunday afternoon that's, that's um that sounds brilliant that sounds nice and uh wonderful and uh and how many acts do you reckon you're gonna have every day every day i'm gonna have two and on sunday we'll have three. Oh wow wonderful stuff yeah tell me more about was it was it uh tevin campbell tevin campbell tevin campbell he uh, is the younger brother of tisha campbell gotcha. who is an actress um and so tevin is he's so when he first came out he was shy very soft, what would be now known as quite a feminine male. Mm -hmm. He's gay, but back then he didn't tell us that because obviously the times. Mm -hmm. But he's now somebody who works as, he's more of a writer producer now. So Mm -hmm. Tevin Campbell's perfect because he is all of the things that his music encompasses. He's very soft, he's very gentle, he's very welcoming. We feel safe around Tevin. And so that's how I want the start of my festival to be. I want you to come in, feel welcomed, feel safe. So you can start to relax and get into what's about to happen this weekend. Wonderful. And I can kind of imagine there's people kind of pulling up and uh, like Tevin's just playing and it's kind of like a, just yeah. like, yeah, it's kind of like a nice intro as well. And uh, yeah, but... it's, it's, it's like when you hear music and it instantly takes you to a time. Yes. Yeah, that's Tevin Campbell. Instantly takes you to the 90s. 
so just to clarify because i think it is what you said so when these acts are performing they're not performing as their modern day selves they're performing as their 90s selves as their 90s selves yeah gotcha yeah and uh so when did you first come across tevin is there a kind of special place in your heart for that artist um i came across tevin back in the 90s when we used to where i grew up in new cross there was it was like an it's an estate so there was a lot of us there a lot of kids a lot of families and we all used to have house parties whoever was celebrating a birthday or you know a leaving party or just because the sun came out today somebody mm-hmm. would have a house party and nine times out of ten we would always hear Tevin Campbell in the beginning I always remember hearing Tevin Campbell and thinking okay the party's going to start soon because when you hear Tevin Campbell usually it goes from talking volume and they put it up a little bit just to let you know we're going to start partying soon guys so hurry up and finish your food and all your conversations and then the music's going to go up and we're going to be in the sitting room and we're going to be dancing so that's why I've put Tevin at the front of my festival because it reminds me of we're about to start some shit now guys okay <laughs> all the calmness is over we're about to get into some shit okay and that's what Tevin is for me <laughs> what, what I like about that because it's quite sweet and wholesome until it's like right we're gonna do some shit and <laughs> it's gonna be yeah. fucking mental <laughs> We're about to forget what the rest of this evening's about to be. <laughs> That's literally what it is. Yeah, because it, it was really nice and sentimental. And it's like, right, I've got a bag of heroin. Let's get onto it, shall we? Like, yeah, say, exactly. <laughs> Let's pop these E's. Come on. I'm glad I'm explaining it correctly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm so 90s right now. I feel, I feel it. I feel it. It's good. <laughs> With the uh, Let's Go Back Festival, do you think it's going to be very party focused? Is it going to be quite a heavy weekend? I don't think it's going to be heavy like that. I think it will be balanced, as in, I feel like as I take you through the weekend, you'll see that it's going to be like a roller coaster. We're going to go up and then I'm going to bring you down. Then we're going to go up and down and at the Mm -hmm. right places, I think, because you can't be hard all day, every day. You'll get tired too quickly. I will, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> no, I definitely feel that. I remember going to festivals when I was a teenager and being like, yeah, I'll stand at the front every for, for every single day and for as long as I need to as well. And uh, I remember staying at the front. Of, I, I, it was metal concerts as well. So like I used to really love rock and roll and uh, yeah, I used to yeah. be at the front. But now even the idea of doing that, I'm like, nope, can't. <laughs> I can spend 10 yeah. minutes at the no. back and that's it. <laughs> yeah. Definitely bring in a chair to sit at the back and watch the kids go crazy. For yeah. sure. <laughs> and beyond that, what, what's your role at the festival? Do, are you kind of there in the... Do you see yourself as an overseer, kind of making sure things are going all right? Are you in the foray of the party? Uh, what kind of things do you think you'll be up to on your weekend? I like to host. Yes. So I would like to be the host of the main stage. Yes. And we, so like, would it be uh, kind of like a compa for festivals? Yeah. Yeah, nice. basically. That would be my dream job at my festival. And I would have delegated to my team who's going to be doing what. I'm not somebody who likes to do the stuff mm-hmm. behind the scenes. So <laughs> I would definitely delegate that. Yeah, and that sounds like a good, else. very good plan. Very That's a good. level of stress I don't find attractive. Yeah. <laughs> and to be fair, I... I I, I've, that's quite a new question I kind of brought out. I like to ask what people, what kind of people people like to do at the festival, but also what I'm essentially asking is like, how much stress do you want? <laughs> and that's, and that's yeah. what I'm asking. And, like... <laughs> and mine's is zero. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be walking through that event like it's not mine. <laughs> if yeah. somebody comes up to me and says, how do you? I'll be like, I'm not the manager. She's over there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you... Just leave that there. Yeah. Pretend that you're booked to buy the festivals. Like, oh, I'm just freelance. So yeah, okay. I'm just yeah. the compare. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna put my own festival and book you as a compare as well. So uh, so uh, yeah. But we'll get t- totally nineties for you. So um, <laughs> um and uh, yeah. So um, after Tevin Campbell, who do you have um after uh, who's gonna get the party started? Who's who's gonna get the shit started? TLC. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Yes. Well, Come well, on, man. Friday night headliners. I, I assume headlining, right? Oh. Yep, Friday yep. night headliners are TLC. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, as I said at the start, you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong with 90s R&B. And TLC are no exception to that rule. Absolutely. Oh. And because it's the 90s, all three of them are there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and 
for any uh, Gen Z, um, Gen Z uh, uh, listeners out there, could you? How would you describe TLC uh, in this? Uh, like, how, how would you describe? Them? What kind? What's the vibe? What kind of things do they do? They were the Spice Girls of the nineties. <laughs> <laughs> They had a message. We all wanted to be one of them. They were dance songs. There were songs you could sing along to. Mm-hmm. They they had like there was um you go into the shops and you got like left eye eye bands. You got T boss hats. You got TLC tr- trousers because they used to wear baggy trousers mm-hmm. that you could clip at the angle at the ankle. Sorry, and then yeah, it was like the, the Spice Girls of the nineties. It's who we followed. Yeah, and uh, they they do songs like uh, chasing waterfalls um, and. Uh... Ain't too proud to beg. What about your friends? Yeah. They spoke about safe sex. Left Eye used to wear a condom underneath her eye because she wanted to promote safe sex. What, the Spice Girls of the nineties, babe. Uh, so uh, I didn't know that. So it's so... little mix, isn't it? Nineties yeah. <laughs> <laughs> little mix. Get it into your nineties little mix. Yeah, nineties <laughs> girls allowed. That's basically where we are. It's, uh, um... Can I just backtrack one second? Because that, that was very fascinating. It is a very a point I we kind of let go very fast. Do you say one of the members used to wear a condom under her, her eye? Like yeah, left eye. <laughs> That's why she when they first came out, she used to wear a condom underneath her left eye because she was promoting safe sex. Because remember that back then we just mm-hmm. come out of the eighties. There was all the the AIDS, the HIV mm-hmm. pandemic, all of that. So she was promoting safe sex by wearing what? a condom underneath her eye. But then after a while, they said, you can't wear a condom on TV. So she just painted underneath her eye. So, but that was it. That was, the paint was the symbol for the condom, for the safe sex. Oh my God. I think that's, that's genuinely like quite punk. You know what I mean? Because like in the seventies, like, uh, yeah. they used to have like dirty needles and like uh, pins and stuff like that. But in this, I was like, yeah. right, that's the opposite. <laughs> yeah. Let's put a condom here. Let's be protected. Yeah, now. exactly. <laughs> I love that. That's a great, great shout um in fact next uh, when when we're at a lockdown the first gig i'm going to do is just uh, stick a condom on my face and uh right, yeah. it's, uh, here safe, we go. promote safe sex babes yeah <laughs> but, but joking aside i actually i think that's fun uh i didn't know that about them and i think that's a uh, it's a really cool message to have uh particularly in the context yeah. as well so yeah i think that's really uh with tlc i kind of find like they're already amazing but to find those little nuggets about them it adds to yeah. their um to the le- legacy really but um yeah did you um yeah. have you ever seen tlc live or it's a did you ever want I to i haven't no hmm. i've seen i've seen one of my other headliners live but i won't spoil who they are Ooh, okay. but i went to their first one of my first concerts was their concert but i haven't seen tlc live i never got to that i never got there unfortunately and um would you go and see them outside of the 90s like if they um if they were doing a tour next year, would you uh, would you go and see them? It's different because it's not all of them. Mm-hmm. And the one that I really would be going to see is the one that's not there. So... <laughs> yeah, that's, that's fair. I'd go in... I think I'd go out of respect, maybe, and buy a <laughs> ticket just to, like, out of respect. But not because, you know, like, if Beyonce would come in, I'd really want to see her. But not... Yeah, it wouldn't be the same. It wouldn't be the same motives. And fam- famously, Beyonce was part of TLC. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, f- yeah. <laughs> for young people, that's that's a fact. Okay. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so um, why do you think TLC are a good fit for a Friday? And because uh, I think they're pretty perfect for your festival. But what do you think they bring for a Friday night energy? It's like this: they're young, they're vibrant. It's a lot of um, upbeat tracks. There's positive messages for the kids. It's colourful. It's all stuff you can sing and dance along to. It's great for a Friday. It's a great intro to what the weekend's about to be. Wonderful stuff. Before we move on from TLC, um, if you had to recommend, like, I'm not sure if you listen to artists by albums or by songs or well, how which way you do it, but if you had to recommend one thing as a starter for any TLC recruiters out there, like if someone wanted to get into TLC, what, who, what, what would you pick? What would you pitch? As in, what song to listen to first, or... Or what song, or what album, or, or whatever you think is best to listen to. Definitely go straight in with the... I think it's Ain't Too Proud to Beg. Mm-hmm. It's the first album that I came across, which I believe to be their first. It's the Ooh on the TLC tip. Yep, yeah, that was the first one. And it's 1992. 
and it's called Ooh on the TLC tip, and it's like literally O O O O O O O O H H H. I genuinely thought you were exclaiming because you just found it. Yeah, I mean, like, Ooh, it's I just I found out what it was. No, that's literally the album name. <laughs> Ooh on the TLC tip. That's very funny. I, uh, that's a very nineties name as well. So. Uh... Yeah, Ooh, literally, and they say it throughout nearly, nearly every song. So that's the one, and it's got Ain't Too Proud to Beg on it, and What About Your Friends, they're my favourite too. And then Baby 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 will probably be something that's like you would play as people are leaving the pod because it's a nice soft song, and it's kind of, you know, okay, we had a good time, it's bedtime now, let's get ready for tomorrow kind of energy. So um, after the TLC, is there going to be like a, a riotous nightlife as well? No, it's bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> I was expecting to be like, a, you know, Oasis and fireworks, but you've gone, no, no, get your no. bedtime. No, no, no. We're not going to give it all to them on the same day. This is how I was treated in the 90s. You can't, if you have it all on the same day, what are you going to have all weekends? You can't. <laughs> You're like a parent figure of this festival. Uh, well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right no sweets before bed as you You're... leave this this concert and you get back to your room there's going to be hot milk and cookies your shower's <laughs> going to be ready you're going to get into bed drink your milk and your cookies you're going to have a, a story read to you it'll be coming over the tannoy everyone in the hotel will get the same story yeah and we'll all go to bed <laughs> and on top of that you have to do your homework before the next day and hand it in so. i mean i'm just saying it should have been done before you came there but <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so we wake up fresh on Saturday morning with a, you know, like a, with a, with cookies in our belly and uh, uh, and uh, yeah. uh, and milk in our hearts. Uh, um, who is the yes. first artist for your Saturday then? So Saturday we're gonna start at about two p.m. Mm-hmm. Right, and we're gonna start with a little bit of Usher. Oh, yeah, Young absolutely. Usher. Like, p- a pinnacle of 90s R&B, Usher. Lovely stuff. Come on. You need some Usher in there, babes. Absolutely. Definitely need some Usher. And you know Usher can take us all the way through the 90s before even touching his naughty stuff. And we could really get into when he sounded like a little baby. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely, because I, I can't claim to know a lot of the back catalogue of Usher, but I do know the main hits and stuff like that, but I do know that because um, Usher's been around for such a long time, he has had like a, a transition as well. So look, if you look at the 90s stuff, he is very, very, very young as well. So uh, He was and... 16, was he, well, 14 was his first song. Really? But he was 16 when he, yeah, he was a baby. Oh. Little, little baby talking about I can love you and it's like babes who are you talking to <laughs> what are you talking about I can love you but don't tell me about your dick and money please do you know what I mean yeah. like... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah Usher came to us as a real baby and his first album kind of went under the radar a little bit but then he came back a little bit after he'd grown and you know his his, his voice had changed and he'd got a little mustache now and so he came to us with my way in 97 and he was like you make me wanna and all that stuff was coming out and i'm mm. like oh my god usher this is amazing and i love him i love usher even though he's full of stds <laughs> we love him <laughs> I mean, like, uh, it's, uh, well, as long as he has a condom under his eye, that's absolutely fine. Yeah, I don't know if you knew, Usher has been, is known to be giving lots of ladies herpes. Did you know that? I didn't know that. But, um, you know, yeah. I, I, I think, like, as a 90s R&B star, there's kind of like a rock star element to it, I guess. Yeah. Usher the herpes slayer. That's kind of where we are. <laughs> I mean, that is not a, that's a, not, not a Game of Thrones book I've picked up yet, but um, it sounds... <laughs> Alas, alas. Um... I mean, some of us like to give jokes, some of us like to give herpes. That's just where we are, man. <laughs> so when did you first come into contact with Usher? When when was um when did you first notice Usher for the first time? When was your kind of that first moment where you're like, Wow, who is this person? It was definitely my way. Yeah. That song My Way was massive to me and I was still very heavily into dancing and stuff and I was always trying to learn the dance routine from watching the music video. Mm-hmm. My way was massive, yeah. 
that sounds uh, I, I love hearing that as well and uh, especially when you're connecting to it not just as a listener but as a performer as well you're trying to literally engage with it as well as a dancer yeah. and uh, yeah i think that's uh, that's really cool and has it been was it nice to grow with usher through the that time until now yes i mean yes and no as in we started with my way and nice and slow and it was all very much you know i want to look after you i want to be your man and your husband even though he hadn't even got a mustache yet yeah and now his latest song is called bad habits um and it's all about he really wishes he could love women but he keeps messing it up because he likes having sex with multiple numbers so <laughs> cheeky. Oh, this is where but... we are yeah. <laughs> yeah. we cheeky, went from let cheeky, me be your yeah. one and only to by the way there's no one and only so yeah it's been a journey yeah. um watching him grow and watching him fire and rehire his mum watching his career <laughs> nosedive and then come back up watching him marry a woman with five kids even though he had none and everyone was really like no not you Asha you're so precious he's been through a lot and we've been there with him wow that sounds really intense like I didn't know that yeah. about him as well that sounds that's... oh yeah Asha's been through a lot but I find the crew that he's in so you've got like Snoop Dogg Jermaine Dupri Asha Little Bow Wow Chris Brown that whole crew they came to get well Chris Brown's quite late but Bow Wow mm -hmm. Asha Snoop Dogg Jermaine Dupri they're always together and they always, always, always have way too many ladies. Always, <laughs> always. It's a known fact. So, yeah, I think Usher's going to be a nice fit at the festival as well. I think that, um, that uh, I think he can probably pull off a very legendary set as well. But um, Yeah. Would he be doing any naughty yeah. songs or uh, any of the, the those? Will he like, do a, a red herring kind of thing to the future? Uh, he might do. I think I would allow Usher to go up to probably 2004 Confessions. Mm -hmm. After that, it just gets a little bit crazy because that's after he fired his mum. Yeah. The rubbish yeah. album comes and then, yeah. So up until about Confessions album, then we're done. Because 8701 is the one we all love and that came in 2001. So. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I think, uh, well, uh, we all kind of assume that 2004 is an extension of the 90s. So we, we, we can definitely allow yeah. confessions. So, uh, um, yeah. But yeah, so after Usher, um, who is your Saturday night headliner? Salt and Pepper! Yes, I love that a lot. Yes, 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 hyped. yes. Hyped, hyped, hyped. And so we'll start nice because, <laughs> you know, Usher brings us with a nice soulful glow, but then Salt and Pepper will just take it out of the park, won't they? They're but, so high energy. Yeah, and that's the thing. I think it would be so enjoyable to watch because I think it would be very, very cool. I think Salt and Pepper, yeah, I think other people um, would kind of put Salt and Pepper lower in the bill, but I actually think you're quite right. Salt and Pepper would absolutely smash that gig out of the park. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I think so. They definitely would, especially if it's a, a 90s vibe. Most of the audience, we're all going to be of the similar era, aren't we? We're all going to be in the zone for a push it moment, for mm -hmm. sure. <laughs> Don't say push it, That's, it's very rude. But uh, <laughs> uh, I might get in trouble. We're going to have to edit that out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and Salt and Pepper as well. Uh, are you quite, are you like, uh, would you consider yourself like a number one fan of theirs? I wouldn't say number one, probably number 27, <laughs> but I definitely, that was the concert that I went to oh, um, yeah. when they first bought out Push It. <laughs> um, my mum took my cousin and myself to the concert. I was probably about seven or eight or something. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I will never forget that day because they were swearing a lot. My mum was like, oh, I didn't know it was going to be like this. Like she was really like trying to protect our ears. But at the same time, it's like, We've heard them. They've said fuck 12 times already. There's no point in hiding my ears now, mum. It's in me. It's there. So after a while, she was just like, fuck it. <laughs> just let them enjoy themselves. And so we enjoyed ourselves after she stopped panicking. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I I love that moment. Uh, and I think it must happen to a lot of uh, parents as well, being like, uh, like uh, dealing with that chaotic energy because you're not sure what's going to happen but i think you could have guessed what was going to happen but yeah i think it's a uh, yeah and how was that live show as well did you enjoy it was it mesmerizing crazy i i will never forget that day i, I was i remember standing on the chairs and dancing and there was a lady who was next to us who kept being like, oh, my God, they just me and my cousin, because we wouldn't stop dancing. And she just kept saying to my mum, they really are going for it, aren't they? That's all I remember. But I just remember this moment of 
we've got our new song, Push It, coming, and it goes like this, and she kept saying motherfucker a lot, and it was really scary after a while, because I was like, is she angry, mum? Or was yeah. she just saying that? But it was a really, I'll never forget that day. It was a great concert. I enjoyed it. And would they be doing a similar set to that day um, in, in yes, the festival? Yes, I want it to be exactly the same as yeah. that day. <laughs> 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 and, and yeah your mum's have been like trying to cover the audience's ears like please don't say those words yeah she's like oh my god i didn't know it's gonna be this bad <laughs> <laughs> this um what's quite sweet about this festival is because it really it links into just your childhood as well like uh and i think there's a yeah. it's a obviously it's a good festival but also it links into why you love these things as well and i think it's very sweet and i love that a lot um and uh yeah yeah, was there any music that you liked as a kid that you don't like now? I can't say yes, you know, because mm-hmm. it's the music that I still listen to today. Yeah. I mean, I know I'm supposed to say yes because we're not supposed to listen to R. Kelly anymore and he was big in the 90s mm-hmm. and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Like MJ, you're not supposed to listen to MJ if you're part of the MJ was a paedophile crew. Um, but mm-hmm. no, because I still do listen to some of those musics today so yeah That's absolutely valid answer yeah <laughs> and also at the time of this, this festival mm-hmm. it's not now we don't know these stuff about them yet we're yes. still just supporting them so yeah they're gonna be there <laughs> but beyond that though so um so what what's what song do you reckon salt and pepper are gonna finish on what's what's their big finale it has to be push it yeah absolutely. it has to be push it we end on push it because I want everyone to leave that concert knackered. You know, like, Push It's one of them songs where it starts and they're like, no, we've got to start it again, we've got to start it again. And everyone gets excited and then the song starts about 1,900 times oh my God. before you get to the end. And we've all like just run all of the, the last bit of energy in the tank. We've run it all out being mm-hmm. crazy doing this song, trying to do the dance, running up and down the stage like Pepper always does and just... <laughs> getting all of our energy out. That's the last bit of Saturday. I assume that uh, if they're doing the songs 1,900 times, the set length is, they're doing about 22 hours. It's a very long set, you know? Basically. It's a a long set. It's a long set. It's a long set. It's a long day. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Salt and pepper day. Uh, Well, let's head over to your Sunday as well, because I'm very excited for the the final three acts you have for that lineup as well. So, um... Well, it's more so a genre and two acts. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. So I would start with like a new Jack Swing moment. Mm -hmm. So that includes like Keith Sweat, Blackstreet, Johnny Gill, (laughs) Bobby Brown, you know, all that kind of ain't too proud to beg my prerogative kind of energy. Mm -hmm. Um, She's playing hard to get Candy Rain, Sober Real, all of that kind of stuff. And even TLC could come back into that as well. It's all of that running man kind of energy. Mm-hmm. I think Bobby Brown Ain't Too Proud to Beg is a good one. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of song. And is this happening as like people are kind of wandering into the main gates and stuff, stuff like that? Is it kind of like yeah, a... Yeah, this is welcome back in. You're coming in and you can hear the music from in the queue. And so mm-hmm. before you even get in, you're already like, get me in there. I don't want to miss this song. You know when you're at a rave and you're outside and you can hear that song you came to hear? Yeah. That's what New Jack Swing is to me. Every yeah. song is the song you came to hear. So you want to just walk in and just catch the vibe straight away. Absolutely. Straight away catch the vibe. And I think on this day, mm-hmm. when I was younger, my mum used to, for my birthday parties, I had a birthday party every year until I was 16. She used to make these um, jelly boats. Mm-hmm. So what she would do is cut an orange into four quarters, take the orange out, right, and put jelly in there and let it set. Mm-hmm. And so instead of eating an orange, I was just eating the jelly. And what I'd do is I'd put alcohol in the jelly. So when you walk in, you've got these little jelly shot things. Oh, my and God. And you're just coming straight in. It's New Jack Swing. And everyone's like, oh, buzzing. It's going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about this a lot, by yeah, the way. <laughs> my favourite thing was, ah, oh, buzzing me. Like, it's like, that's, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that's really good. Lovely stuff. Yeah, oh, buzzing. <laughs> I yeah, uh, because you definitely have a house party vibe as well. You mentioned it earlier, like it kind yes. of like, uh, and I like that. Like, I think Jello shots uh, is uh, is very very house party, and I like that. It could just be one yeah. big house which you're doing it in. You know what I mean? 
facts. It could be an Airbnb, like a mansion party. <laughs> what, what, you should, what you should do is Airbnb, but like you don't tell the people you're Airbnb and Beam from. You're just like, right, can I book this for the next three days? <laughs> and uh, just let facts. you know. I'll just book it for a week and yeah. put all my family photos up. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Um, but yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, New Jackson Swing. I think that's a uh, it's a nice chill vibe where people are kind of slowly getting yeah. drunk. Yeah. Who were the final acts of your festival then? Well, I mentioned him before, but I would definitely get R. Kelly in there because yeah. I think mm-hmm. he is very, very uh, important to nineties R and B. So R. Kelly would be the next act. Yeah, um, with um, obviously we kind of uh, alluded to it earlier, but uh, yeah, with R. Kelly, uh, there is obviously the uh, very problematic angle of it. But as we discussed, I feel that yes. as I feel that we have to m- mention it, um, but also at the same yes. time, you've already explained that it's the nineties and it's it's a dream festival, yeah. and uh, we kind of uh, yeah, I think I think that's absolutely valid. Yeah, because remember you asked, are we? Is it going to be? 90s in this day and age or are we going back to that day and age and we're mm-hmm. definitely going back to that day and age yeah before absolutely. everything you know happened absolutely um, when r kelly himself was still a baby and just emerging into the industry still couldn't read just could sing mm-hmm. that's the r kelly i'm talking about <laughs> yeah, we, yeah we don't have to get too bogged down into the uh uh nah. the, the issues surrounding that but i think it's important we we a, a rather like uh, mention it as well but like yeah in terms of uh yeah i think it's important to uh it's hard to separate art from no artists as well especially uh, in a case like that where it's quite uh yeah it's quite quite malicious but um you know there's a lot of things going on but on top of that it's um yeah i i think let's let's talk about the music here as well and i think uh yeah. in terms of the music it's uh some amazing stuff and and it, it in... does and it brings everyone together because everybody has when you hear an r kelly song especially from early r kelly Everybody has a memory of what they were doing, what they were wearing. You, sometimes you can go as far as to remember a smell when mm-hmm. you just sit and listen to a song. Yes. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And mm-hmm. that's what I love about the 90s music. It really does. You could really stop and be like, oh, I remember that day. And that's beautiful. I, like, I remember like the festivals. I actually, um, whenever I smell the smell of a campfire, you know, not like a normal fire, but one that's quite smoky. It's kind of like a bit thin. Yeah. Like, that smell. And it, this, the smell like going through your clothes and you can smell it afterwards as yeah. well that's uh i love that smell it's very evocative and uh as a young person what kind of thing did um what what drew you to r kelly what was the thing that you thought you really liked about r kelly more than everyone else i think that literally was the environment that i was in again the house parties the music videos being a dancer mm-hmm. like i was just immersed dad's dad's hobby as a dj i was literally immersed in and around music all of the time I'd wake up to dad playing music. I'd go to bed to dad playing music. We'd play music to tidy the house as a family. We'd play music on a car drive to Brighton. We'd pitch, you know what I mean? It was always music and R. Kelly was definitely always in there. I mean, even if we're listening to, my parents are Jamaican, so even if we're listening to rare grooves or reggae, someone's mm-hmm. covered an R. Kelly song. So we're now listening to it in a different way. Do you know oh, what I mean? Really? It's still going to be yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And uh, <laughs> in terms of themes or festivals, I think yours is the most tight we've ever had, really, because it's uh, a one of the most oh. tight. Because I think like it's it has a genre, it sticks to it, and it has different levels to go with it. Thank you. I really thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I am I'm glad to hear. And but well, let's let's uh, let's find out who the. Uh, a Sunday night headliner is for um, for, uh, for uh, Let's Go Back Festival. So, because I did say it's going to be a roller coaster, I'm going to take you up, I'm going to take you down, I'm going to take you left and right. Mm-hmm. We've had, we started with our friend... Tevin Campbell. Started with our friend Tevin Campbell. We went up with TLC, we came back down again, we went up again, we went round and round and round. Now it's Sunday, and I've got to leave you to go home. So I'm going to bring you back down a little bit now, and our headliner for the Sunday will be... Jodeci. Okay. Um, I am. I don't think I'm aware of this artist. Could you tell me a little bit more? Oh, they're a band actually. Yeah. Four boys, two brothers, two friends. Yeah. And um, they were the probably boys' own of the nineties <laughs> in the black community. Yeah. Westlife. They were the boy band everybody wanted to marry, fuck, be, be around, yeah. know, talk to, you know, and their songs, you know, they go from high tempo, but mm-hmm. most of it was like soft R&B, kind of like um, slow jams, 
moving into that area. So I'd start with their high tempo stuff and then start to just ease everybody out so you can then grab your stuff and go home. Tell you what, I've just Googled Joy to see really quickly and uh, I definitely yeah. recognize them. Absolutely. Freaking yeah. you get on up every moment. Yeah, de- yeah. Like, they definitely, I know it sounds daft, but they have that kind of look down to a T, right? Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. You know Casey and Jojo all my life? Oh, yes. Rings a bell. Yeah, yeah. Casey yeah, and Jojo. They're from Joe to see. Gotcha. Yeah. Lovely stuff. Yes. Oh, I yeah. see. And well, I mean, yeah. that's as you say, there's different vibes for different nights. You have uh, TLC on Friday. You got Salt and Pepper really like going for it on the on um, Saturday, and then you uh, you kind of bring it nice and down for Joe to see as well. Yeah. And uh, why do you think Joe to see is um, the, the perfect way to finish off your festival? They are staple again. They are like R. Kelly for our '90s R and B. You can't go through a '90s R and B quiz show talk conversation without mentioning Jodeci, um R. Kelly and those type of people. You can't. They have to be have to be in there. Have to be. They're so important. Their albums brought so much peace. I mean I'm I know that a lot of children have made Jodeci albums. That's for sure. <laughs> That's I know that you've got a friend. You, ha- you don't even know, but you have a friend who yeah. was made to a Jodeci album, for sure. <laughs> uh, in fact, that's how I make friends. I make sure to know. Exactly, that. yeah. <laughs> Were you made to Jodeci albums? <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. Get out of here. Come on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've also found out that they were also known as the bad boys of R&B, which I... <laughs> yeah, they were. They were so naughty. And so one of them had a baby with Taboz from TLC. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, so there's a lot of um, mixing with the, the group. So mm-hmm. uh, TLC ladies had relationships with them. SWV ladies had relationships with them. There's a lot of artists that had relationships with these boys and they were like you see like i don't know if you know bobby brown was known as the bad boy of r&b do you remember oh yeah i think so yeah he was naughty for corrupting our dear princess whitney but these were the grouped versions of the bobby browns gotcha. and so they were yeah it was yeah you fancied somebody from that group for sure absolutely and that so a lot of people um a lot of people sleeping around with each other and uh, that's probably why there's a condom on the face and also why uh, there's STIs everywhere as well so uh, there you so. go that's why, that's why you've got to practice safe sex <laughs> if you've listened to this podcast and only come up with one thing it's practice safe sex and that's what we say no it's wear a condom under your left eye yeah. okay <laughs> Uh, <laughs> tell you what so, but yeah um, well I think that's a, a perfect way to finish off your festival but we're nearly at the very end but before we have to do that let's deal with some floor fillers As with event management, things are bound to go wrong. So here's a couple of hypothetical questions that our guest has to deal with in the manner that she sees fit. Oh no, with Jodeci have cancelled last minute, who do you get to replace them? I think either SWV mm-hmm. or MJ. Okay, yeah, actually, yeah, I think... It'd cost nine times more, but it'd be <laughs> worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, I, well, you're, it's a dream festival, so you can you can swing on it as well. It'd be fine. Um, just yeah, uh, just make exactly. sure to hook up the prices of the milkmen, and uh, you'll be fine. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> One of your acts have forgotten their equipment, but good news, they can do an acoustic set. Which artist, if you had to choose, would you make do an acoustic set? Oh, that's hard because a lot of '90s music yeah. is really about the beat. Yeah, I know. I know. Oh, <laughs> probably Jodeci. Okay. Because yeah. Acoustic slow jams, you can handle. What I can't handle is push it acoustics. <laughs> That's not gonna work 
we need the drums and the uh, guitars <laughs> yeah I, I think it's important as well absolutely but and especially yeah. what you were saying you needed that beat uh, I thought it'd be quite a hard one for you but yeah I think that's that's how you've done quite well there <laughs> okay so um oh dear someone's running late for your festival and someone needs to fill for time but fortunately one of your favorite celebrities is wanting to do a DJ set for you uh, they don't need to be a DJ but which celebrity would you pick Oh, from the 90s. Oh, Jam Master J from Run DMC. Yes. There's not tons of hip hop in here, but do you think it's gonna, that hip hop edge would be really cool? Yeah, so I'm like an R&B head, but I think if for this scenario in particular, a little hip hop injection would be fine. I'd be happy with that. Wonderful stuff. Uh, let's, let's finish with this. Your festival loves you and they want you to sing one song at your festival. If you had to go on stage to join one artist during one song, which song would you pick? Ooh, probably TLC, What About My Friends. Oh, that's a really it's cute just a one. Good, yeah, it's a feel good. It's nice. It's got a nice message. You can dance to it. You can have good fun to it. Yeah, What About My Friends, TLC. And that is the end of Floor Fillers, and it's the end of the podcast. Thank you so much for joining us, Tanya. Have Yay. you enjoyed yourself? I enjoyed the life out of that. Thank <laughs> you. It's an absolute I, I want to put on this... Um, festival now <laughs> right well we'll do it i'll, I'll contact uh, i'll contact you we'll, we'll get we'll get it set up we'll get some contracts on the go and <laughs> be good let's do it <laughs> uh, lovely stuff and all uh, we've got to do is bring people back from the dead it's not hard <laughs> yeah we can do that easy <laughs> absolutely it's fine. Uh, you know i'm very i'm very good at making things happen so yeah that's <laughs> i'll use my awesome. influence so, uh, <laughs> But yeah, thank you so much for joining us. And where can people find you online, Tanya? You can find me uh, on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, Tanya Moore. Just check the, the uh, spelling because otherwise you won't find me. Um, <laughs> and I've got a website, <laughs> tanyamore.co.uk. Or you can find me on iPlayer doing Bamus, um, BBC Stand Up or Comedy Central. Yes, and please go and check them out. They are uh, all of them with quality, and uh, yeah, Tanya smashes any- anything that she does. So yeah, um, go and check them thank out. Thank you. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for listening to Castful. Uh, you can check out past episodes for free on Apple and Spotify and everywhere else. Please give us a follow at Castful Podcast uh, on Twitter, and you can also follow me at Matt House Comedy on Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, and so on. And if you like this podcast, please give us a five star rating online. But please, as a final thank you, let's give it up for my wonderful guest, Tanya Moore. Yay, thank you.